Hi, Chris here from EDI Modesso. Welcome to today's two minute tip. Today I want to talk about batch mesh connection. So often we're confronted with models that look a little bit like this. This is a shell model where each plate is an individual solid, an individual shell solid. These models come about because the uh, CAD designer has built the model for fabrication, so pre prefabrication. So each plate is individual. Sometimes there's gaps between the plates that have to be closed up. And us as a structural engineer want to analyze this uh, post fabrication as though it's a welded structure all connected together. So what we have to do is, is create a, a model, if you like, an FEA model where this model is connected together. So how do we do that? Well, one, one of the approaches we could take is to uh, use a geometry preparation tool, maybe ANSYS Space Claim or ANSYS Design Modeler, and at a, at a geometry level, connect these different plates together. It could be time consuming, could take quite a, quite a while to connect everything together, uh, and it may not give us the flexibility to assign different thicknesses to each plate. A second approach we could have to connect everything together is using contacts. So using the standard ANSYS contact algorithms, bonded contact, uh, MPC would be a good approach for this. Uh, and we could automatically create contact between those edges. Uh, it would be reasonably quick to create that contact but we wouldn't have a conforming mesh between the different plates. We could have different mesh meshes across those plates, so a discontinuity across the edges. And also by using constraint equations to connect everything together, we're adding a computational overhead. A third approach we could take is creating a conformal mesh. So a conformal mesh is where the nodes on the edges are, uh, are shared between the adjoining plates. And we can do that using, if we select the mesh branch and do insert, um, manual mesh connection. If we insert a manual mesh connection, we can select two adjoining plates as a master and slave and connect those together at a mesh level, creating a conforming mesh. The downside to that third approach is that we would have to do that for every single edge in the model and again would be quite time consuming. So fortunately, we have a fourth approach which was introduced by ANSYS a couple of releases ago and it's called batch mesh connection. So how do we access that? So if we select the mesh branch, you may have seen this under batch connection down here. By default, it's set to no. So all we need to do is switch that on. We switch it on. There are a lot of control settings. I'm not going to go into detail. Have a look in the have a look in the manuals. Uh, all I'm going to do is set a size here, global size of 50 millimeters. So any plates that are within that size, they should be connected together. And then all we have to do is go away and mesh the model. So we can see it generated that mesh quite quickly. If we zoom in, it looks as though we've got a conformal mesh. Uh, we can see where the nodes should be. They look as though they're all connected. Uh, however, we can check whether we actually have got a full conforming mesh by selecting the display tab and showing the edge colors based on connection status. So here, if I select by connection, we can see the purple lines are triple connections where the edges of the outer plates and the internal ribs are connected. Uh, we've got red connections on the outer edges. These are single connections. And down here where we don't have an internal rib, we've got double connections. So we can quickly see from that view that this is a perfectly uh, fully conformal mesh, fully connected and ready for doing a structural analysis. So thank you for attending today's two minute tip.